Okay, so we're on the top of uh, page 13. Um, the title is Non-Monotonic Logic in Default Reasoning. So now we're going to take the uh, what we've learned sort of abstractly and actually start to apply it very, very slowly to uh, the, the formal language. So, <clears throat> let me write that down. Non, non L and Non L and uh, non monotonic logic and default reasoning. The question is, what what is default reasoning? Um, default reasoning pertains to the conclusions that are most likely to be true. We see immediately that's is different from first order predicate logic, right? First order predicate logic, it's true or it's false, generally speaking. <coughs> and the truth or falsity of those statements are true throughout time, right? They preserve. They Consistently true. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. They're consistently true. This uh, this notion of default reasoning within non-monotonic logic is different because we are saying that the conclusions are most likely true. It is it is typically the case that it is more likely to be true given some set of circumstances. So note, unlike predicate logic, there are uh, where truth is definitive in non-L formal systems preserve uncertainty. So what we're going to be able to do, and I'll show you an example in a second, we're going to, within our formal language, be able to preserve uncertainty. Um, that is, there are varying degrees of truth, right? So the discussion is going to allow us to assess varying degrees of truth, um, and we'll see exactly how that, we'll see exactly how that's done. So, <clears throat> as is the case, when I do any new, I introduce any new logic, uh, on my YouTube, I always demonstrate how to read the symbols. Right, so if we're doing modal logic and I'm, and I'm introducing the operators for possibility and necessity, we describe how to read it. I describe how to read it. Symbolic logic, predicate logic, when we introduce the the operators, uh, existential quantifier, or the quantifiers, existential quantifier, and universal quantifier, we read it. Similarly, the case we're going to do the same thing here, right? <clears throat> so, reading non-L language. Reading non-L language. Reading non-L. How do you read this? How is this language read? This formal language, how is it read? It's actually relatively simple. And I'm not going to get tied up on the wording. Depending on who the author is, sometimes the wording differs. but to really obsess about how it's worded, I think is ridiculous at a, a very, very introductory level. As long as you just understand the concept, right? The concept is what's important. And um, insofar as you're able to look at the problem that you'll be given or the statement that, you, that you'll be given and assess varying degrees of uncertainty, <clears throat> varying degrees of truth from that, I've been successful in what I wanted to do because that's all I want to do. Uh, in this in this very very sort of general introductory account, so the language of first order predicate logic is augmented, extended, amended. So if you understand how to read the language of first order predicate logic, you're already in a good stance. And I've in my first order predicate logic series, uh, I think I have 40 minutes of prior to even beginning to solve the problems. I think I have 30 or 40 minutes of just an explanation of the various parts and the functions and the relationships between parts and so on. So I have a very, very in-depth account of how to read and make sense of all the different aspects of first order predicate logic. Click the link at the beginning of section four in our critical thinking series and just you know refresh yourself because I'm gonna assume that you already understand um, first order predicate logic in order to get to this point. So if you don't, make sure you take the time to make sense of that and then you know come back. So, first order, the, the language of first order predicate logic is, uh, and this is a quote, quote, augmented with the modal operator M. So we're going to introduce the modal operator, <coughs> man, I'm running out of ink today. We're going to introduce the modal operator M. All right, we're going to introduce the modal operator M. <coughs> uh, 
uh, which means this M means is consistent with, right? It means is it means is consistent, right? M means is consistent with, right? This idea of being consistent with, it's not saying that it is true, right? It is consistent with the belief that dot 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 dot. If you have this assumption, then that assumption is consistent with the belief that this happens, right? So let me give you, let me see if I can come up with an example just real quick. Um, <clears throat> I can't, uh, I was thinking about UFOs, it was the first thing that came to my head. Um, if you have the belief that there are, there is extraterrestrial life is possible, then that belief is consistent with a UFO sighting, right? That's a perfect example, actually. If you have the belief that extraterrestrial life is, is possible and is, is, is actual, then it is, that belief is consistent with a UFO sighting. If I don't believe in extraterrestrial life, then when I see that same phenomena that you saw, it will not be consistent with a UFO sighting because I'll call it something else. I'll say, well, it's just the lights on the top of a plane or something, right? Or it's military aircraft, right? So the belief in extraterrestrial life, for example, is consistent with um, the believer's UFO sighting. You can see the relationship, right? Okay. That's not to say that the person will always have that belief. Right? It's not to say that a person will always have that belief. And a very clear example of this is the fact that people um, very frequently change their beliefs. I once believed in um, institutionalized religion. I got more information. I got rid of those beliefs. I never believed in inst religious institution, institutionalized religion. I got some beliefs. Now I believe in it. And so on. Right? So that these beliefs fluctuate. Okay. So the language of first order predicate logic is augmented with the modal operator M, and M basically means is consistent with. All right, so let's look now at an example. Um, let's look at the, an example that I created. Um, the example that I created, I actually got the idea from um, my international war video, where I talk about um, sort of the idea of an augmented understanding of, um, of, oh, not the parable of the tribes, of, um, prisoners to love, right? So I go through in my, um, first order predicate logic, not first order predicate logic, sorry, international war series, I talk about uh, the prisoner's dilemma and I talk about the relationship between two parties with respect to escalating or de-escalating the conflict. And we recognized, this is, this might not make sense for a lot of you, but you can just click my international war, any link to my international war video, and you'll see this, the structure. If two people escalate the conflict, obviously bad things are going to happen, to keep it general. So I wanted to, I wanted to take information that I've already presented on uh, in my YouTube channel, on my YouTube channel, and I wanted to introduce this idea of the new modal operator M is consistent with, to something that I've already discussed. So. Let's look at uh, let's look at this. Imagine that you have this. This is the statement that we're going to be looking at, right? Uh, I probably should have wrote this smaller. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to be able to fit it. So we have this. This is this is the problem, right? Not the problem, but what's being asserted, 
right? And the question is, how in the world do we read this? Like, how, how do we make sense of this? I mean, it's, 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 it's a bit easier because, and I want to make M stand away from the R reference, right? It's a bit easier to read because there's obviously words in there, right? There's obviously words in there, but how do we make sense of this? Now, <clears throat> what I do is I show you three variations of the same structure. I replace the dot, which is and, with this symbol. That symbol means the same, right? So that this and this mean exactly the same thing. The modal operator 